Welcome to State of the Word, Nashville, Tennessee, at WordCamp United States 2018. There's been a lot that's been going on, so I'd actually like to allow WordPress a chance to reintroduce itself. It is the reason we're here. WordPress isn't a physical thing. It's not a set of code. It's kind of an idea. It's backed by the full faith and credit of every person and company that depends on it. It only exists in the space between our heads and our minds. It has a constitution. It's built on the four freedoms. The freedom to run the program for any purpose, freedom to study how the program works and change it, to redistribute it, and to share your changed versions. This is like our Bill of Rights. It's the fundamental things that's included with every single copy of WordPress and every single plugin and theme that you get from it, certainly the ones you get from WordPress.org. This freedom is not just theoretical, it's practical. The data in WordPress is totally portable. You can run it just about anywhere, from Amazon Web Services to Raspberry Pi. And as we like to say, um, it is both free and priceless at the same time. Another beautiful thing about WordPress is its scalability. And I don't mean this purely in the sort of technical sense, that it can run a small site to something that runs hundreds of millions of pages per day. But you can keep WordPress with you your entire life, and it'll grow with you, and you can grow with it. And it's one of the few things on the internet and in technology that you can be sure that what you put into it, you'll be able to either use it or get out a decade later. And we've been doing this now for 15 years. And did he, who got to make it to the sponsor section today? See some of the booths? Get some cool t-shirts, some cool socks. Like you really don't even need a pack for WordCamp. You can just <laughs> come with that day's clothes and you can kind of fill up the rest once you get here. Um, WordPress is supported by a really com robust commercial ecosystem. One that I estimate represented by the companies in, those, uh, in that sponsor hall and others to be over $10 billion per year. So you add all this up together, and we're united by a common mission, which we say is democratizing publishing. Now, what does that mean? And I know Morden talked a little bit about this earlier. To us, democratize means that everyone can use it, regardless of the language they speak, the device used, physical ability, income or economic ability, location, and finally, technical proficiency. You add all this up, and you look at the last 15 years of work, it combines to about a 32.5% market share, uh, which is coming along, almost to a third. And like I said a few years ago, we're building a web operating system. It's an operating system for the open, independent web and a platform that others can truly build on. It's also why we're all here. And if you are watching this on the live stream or later on a video or you're here in this room, uh, we'll put some more chairs in next time, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you're in rarefied air compared to the vast majority of WordPress users that will never watch a video like this, that will never come to a WordCamp. And the primary experience of it is just the software. And as you may have noticed, as we were filing in, we had some, uh, some inspirational quotes on Loop. <laughs> uh, might have uh, been something you recognized in your own experience or someone you've helped. As far as WordPress has come, I think it's good to remind ourselves that we have maybe even further to go, that we do have a lot of problems. A lot of, there's been a lot of questions this year about why we're doing certain things, like why working on Gutenberg. And I think it's good to return always to users to find that. So we're gonna go through something that is super awkward. And this is watching user test videos. Who's ever done this before? <laughs> <sighs> For those of you who didn't raise your hands, please prepare yourself. Like, something like this needs to be easy to use, and I wouldn't say any of this is easy to use. This is frustrating to use. Um, this feels like writing a blog back in 2005. Feels like writing a blog back in 2005. <laughs> Next up. I have two images side by side. Why can't I do that? I would... Yeah, I'm thinking that I want to start here and then we'll put the cursor here and go back, but I'm not able to do so. So... It gets worse. Instead, I'm just going to see what other options I have. Let's see, so... 
Don't click that. If I do an align, I'm going to... No, they're going to go right underneath each other. Add two images side by side. Why can't I do that? Got image on the left now. Some text on the right. So, I guess, online right, hello. It's not exactly to the right of it, but it is... Oh. Okay. Oh. I didn't do that. I was just clicking enter. Oh. Um, it's not directly to the right of it, but that's about as best as that's going to go. Um, and then a paragraph below it, so... I... I... It's hard to get the actual thing. Okay, so we need to go back there. This is very finicky. This does not work. <laughs> this is very finicky. This does not work. Just move this image up. Why? Why are you not moving? <laughs> There's more. Hmm. I am not seeing an option. So when I go to the add media page, there is no video available for me to add. Dang it, add a caption to the video. How would I add a caption? I have no clue. This is getting pretty painful, isn't it? How do I add a caption? I have no clue. I will not subject any of us to any more of those. Um, but that kind of was painful, right? Uh, I've likened it before to like when you're watching a horror movie and you're like, no, don't go in that room. <laughs> You see folks uh, just trying to do, and nothing, by the way, that was just described there, I think a reasonable person would say should be that difficult, right? Why should it be that hard to have an image with some text next to it? We've all seen that on web pages hundreds, if not thousands of times. So when you start to try to lay things out, particularly, as you might have guessed, those were all tests with WordPress 4.9, um, it can be very, very difficult. There's also other things. This is a quote from a review that says, if you've ever tried to copy text from Microsoft Word and then paste it into a poster page with WordPress, then you know it never looks right when you publish it to your blog. Suffice it to say, Word and WordPress are not very compatible. I like that little closer there. <laughs> suffice it to say. Well, suffice it to say, this status quo is not good enough. And this has been our editor experience for over a decade now. And for many of us, We've gotten used to it or learned to work around. Uh, for me, one of the big learning moments was when I realized just how often um, I was clicking over to code view from the visual view in the WYSIWYG. So I enjoyed composing things in the visual view. But sometimes I'd be trying to put text inside or outside of a link or put an image at a certain point in a paragraph, and it just wasn't going right. And I'd be like, I wouldn't even think of it, actually, because I'm fluent in HTML and CSS. So I would just, and we made the code view switcher so easy to get to, I would just go back and forth all the time. I started to just count that. And then, of course, of writing a post, a simple post, something that shouldn't be difficult. I would sometimes do that five, 10 times. And I bet if we looked around this room to the most elite folks in the WordPress world, we probably have started to take that for granted. So the concept that we think can fix this is blocks. So what are blocks? Blocks are predictable, tactile, and can be as simple as a text block or as rich as an entire e-commerce interface that you can kind of zoom into when you go to a block. See, the problem with WordPress's and many other CMS's approach in the past with what we were calling WYSIWYG is we tried to hide everything. Gutenberg takes that HTML structure that's behind the page and makes it more explicit and then simplifies it into the mental model of blocks, which is something that is both more apparent to people and we can reuse across the entire interface. Regardless of how powerful, like a block is, for example, an e-commerce one or a video one or some of the ones I'll show you in a little bit, you can interact with them in the same way. They have a consistent interface for adding, deleting, and moving them around and laying them out. Let me show you some videos that are a little bit more fun, which is, let's build a quick little site with Gutenberg. 
as Bebo Valdez, who the release was named for, an amazing Cuban musician. Also the father of Chucho Valdez, one of my other favorite pianists. We're coloring the image. Oh, look, there's some text next to an image. <laughs> that was possible. Adding a YouTube. Found one right there. Make it a little bigger. Let's put a little gallery just to fill it out. And... Voila. And what we saw looked just like what you can now see on the site. Whew. <laughs> oh, thank you. Copy and pasting has also been improved. So uh, this is a, a Google document. Uh, pretty complex. Got some layout, got some images, got some different things. About to control A to select all. We can paste right there. Look, exactly what we saw works just fine. This works for uh, Google Docs, it works for Quip, it works for Office 365, it even works for Microsoft Word. So Word and WordPress, suffice it to say, can now work together. We also added some cool developer features that we're curious to see how people are gonna take advantage of. So this is actually exporting a block. So you can take any reusable block and it'll give you a little chunk of JSON. Um, you can then go and take that chunk of JSON, as this is a pretty meaty one, and upload that into, we can import from JSON, creates a reusable block, and then you can use that to start a page, or post, or anything. Building on a common pattern that we've seen in WordPress page builders. Ta-da, that's everything we just saw. So this is, uh, what we've been calling Gutenberg. It is uh, the bulk of what we've been working on the past few years, um, and it's been going fairly well. Uh, we put out Gutenberg as a plugin. It started first, actually, if people might not remember, but the first few months, it was actually just purely in JavaScript, which is part of the reason it's been so embeddable and re easily reused by other projects. We turned it into a plugin, kind of summer of last year. Summer of this year, we started promoting it a lot more. And prior to the 5.0 release, got it to 1.2 million active installs and a run rate of about 40,000, just under 40,000 posts per day. It's a huge amount of activity, over 8,000 commits from over 340 uh, unique contributors. And we've also been talking about it uh, everywhere we can. At WordCamps, we've had 277 WordCamp talks on it, 555 meetup events, and over 1,000 blog posts done across the various WordPress-related things talking about Gutenberg. Uh, so Gutenberg was out as a plugin, and the reason for doing that was both to get it more widely tested and to allow the ecosystem to start to build around it. We've seen some great uh, results there so far from themes. So we've got over 100 Gutenberg themes already on the directory. We have a new Gutenberg block tag uh, that is currently live for plugins and will be live for themes very soon. We're launching with that the 2019 theme, which, as you can see, has both a beautiful front end, that matches exactly what you see in the WP Admin. So 2019 was our idea to show off what a sort of Gutenberg native theme can do, and it's not even what's gonna be able to come. People have already been building beautiful sites with Gutenberg. Here is the Indigo Mill, and showing both the site and some of the blocks that it's using. It's paragraph block, button block, image blocks, media and text. A really cool one called Luminous Solar that was actually using some more custom blocks, but again, this is a site that if you were to tell someone to do in a WYSIWYG of WordPress before, only using a WYSIWYG, not using a special theme, not using special templates, anything else, would have been basically possible. Some of you might recall a few years ago, I exhorted everyone to learn JavaScript deeply. How's that been going? <laughs> huh? Who feels like they've gotten JavaScript deeply down pat? We've got at least a dozen people. All right, phase two will be easy. <laughs> It is a challenging language. So I'm going to ask the, actually say something a lot easier as homework from this one, which is to learn blocks deeply. This is actually pretty fun. Uh, XWP made a Jenga set that corresponds to Gutenberg blocks, which I thought was some of the coolest swag I've seen this year. So good job, XWP. But as I said, the blocks are the new fundamental building blocks. They're the DNA. They're the sort of musical notes that we can then build everything else on, much like Western music 
has kind of 12 different notes or tones. Everything is built from that. A few chords, like in a song like the blues, three basic chords. These are what you can create almost anything you can imagine from. So far with blocks, we have about 70 native blocks, over 100 third-party blocks, and over 1,000 different layer con configuration and different blocks related to that. Here are some blocks in the wild. So built into Gutenberg, and now in your new block editor in WordPress 5.0, there's a selector that lets you kind of search, find things, go for it. We've also had, uh, with the interface of blocks, plugins like Yoast SEO, now being able to give you per block readability analysis. We have blocks like this one, 360 image by Kevin Bazira. It allows you to embed VR 360 images, so the sort of marrying of Gutenberg and VR is finally happening a little bit. Google did their AMP block, Google and Friends, I should say, um, that can give you per block suggestions on whether the content is AMP compatible. Drop it from Rian, right here in the front row. Uh, shows you can kind of bring in images and giphies and things. E-commerce has been early adopters of blocks, so this is an Equid store. By the way, I love that preview. <laughs> it embeds the entire store right there. You can click through it from that one block. For WooCommerce, there's a products block. It lets you choose what you're showing. So this is choosing the music category. It shows it very in line right as you're editing it. And then again, you publish it. It looks great on the front ends, right there. And then BigCommerce, a uh, new entrance to WordPress, and also a new sponsor, so thank you. Um, shows, you can add products, remove products, show what's there, and then on the front end, it looks fantastic. We've got profile blocks. We've got recipe blocks. Uh, yeah, someone likes to cook. We've got tarot card blocks. So if you want to predict the future of WordPress, I think you can use this one. This was a block written with only about, I think it was 137 lines of code by Dennis Snell, just kind of showing off that using the new React JavaScript framework that Gutenberg's written in, you can create this really cool little sketch thing. Um, we've got blocks within blocks within blocks. So the, uh, one cool one to check out is a Jetpack contact form block. But if you check it out, it's actually just a series of nested blocks. So it provides each of the sub blocks, both has the functionality, uh, full blocks, but also the accessibility. So all the work we did for accessibility around ARIA labels, keyboard navigation, everything, is inherited by all the sub-blocks. There's some fun ones. Uh, longtime WordPress community member Nick Hamsey has made some fun ones, including a guidepost. This is kind of like an automatic table of contents. So as you add headings, it'll automatically create that table of contents. Ghost writing, which I hadn't seen before. If you all know ghost writers, instead of you can ghost write the WordPress, Five people got that reference. <laughs> so make it Ghostwriter, publish it, and then on the front end, see, it's coming in. See, that wasn't too scary. I also really like his uh, spoiler alert block. So that says out. So you ever write about a movie? Everyone lives. Make it a spoiler alert. Let's also style it a little better. So we can make that bigger. Large fonts maybe a different background color, publish it, and now on the front end, click to reveal. Ta-da! <laughs> Movie reviews and spoiler alerts around the web will now be safe. We've also seen the design aspects of Gutenberg started to be really taken advantage of. This is one of my other favorite ones I've seen so far. It's called the Caxton, Caxton Shape Divider Block from Poodle Press. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> so as you can see, what they're doing is sort of choosing different kind of shapes that can go in between the blocks, matching the colors of the blocks that came before and after it. So I think we got some waves in there. I think we're also going to show a cloud one, which I really like, because sometimes I get asked whether WordPress runs in the cloud. I love that preview animation. <laughs> go watch it all day. And so this shows, as you can see, creates this into beautiful transitions between blocks. And it actually. Uh, addresses one of my key worries when we started creating blocks was that everything people were creating with them looked, well, rather blocky. <laughs> so uh, bringing the different shapes, I think, really helps. There are block collections being created everywhere you can expect. And these are plugins that include many, many different blocks. And there's even third-party libraries, so places you can go online. Like this is editorblockswp.com, has a huge library. Uh, the Gutenberg Hub is talking about them. Gutenbergcloud.org, 
which is also the same folks who have already ported Gutenberg to Drupal and are launching sites for clients live with Gutenberg and Drupal combined. Uh, Ahmad Owais, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, created an amazing framework uh, called the Gutenblock, Gutenblock Toolkit that is actually responsible and behind it's kind of been used to create the vast majority of all the blocks I just showed you, which is kind of amazing. So let's do a quick round of applause for Ahmad for creating that. It's very impressive. <laughs> There's been a few others, like the Block Lab, um, the Lazy Blocks, which allow you to create uh, blocks right from in, within WP Admin, so it's kind of a visual builder for blocks. And on amazing sites like CSS Tricks, there are now Gutenberg and tutorials for blocks. So that's where we've been. Uh, for this next bit, I'd like to invite on, is Ginny nearby? We've got, uh, this is a very real uh, support message that came in, actually on WordPress.com. Because as WordPress.com was rolling out, there was different states you could be in where you'd get some, uh, some Gutenberg or some not Gutenberg, and you're going to read, it's actually in French, and you're going to read the French or read the English. But, oh, read the French. Probably and best translate. if I do the French. Yeah. You do the English? Yeah, I'll do the English. Let's go for it. But you got, oh, you got a mic already. Yeah, oh, we're I'm all mic'd up, ready to go. <laughs> ready? Yes. Je n'arrive pas à construire ma page, c'est trop difficile. What does that mean? I thought you were going to tell us. There's no notes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this job is more than I thought it was going to be. I cannot uh, make my page, it's too difficult. And then he goes on to say, uh, Je veux avoir un éditeur simple pour construire ma page. I want a simple editor to be able to build my page. And then the support response was, Do you remember? Oh, there's one more. Oh, that's all Do you I remember have. what it looked like? Was it this with the plus signs that you could click to add content? So initially, the support person thought that they were asking to go back to the old WYSIWYG, because there's been so much in the community saying how the old one was simpler. And did it have the plus content, like blocks of content? And the response was, we. Oui. We. Oui. <laughs> Thank you. De rien. <laughs> I know, despite WordCamp Paris, <laughs> I did not quite get my French down. Um, this was so cool that actually this person new to WordPress was saying that this thing, which in some ways is much, much more difficult and has a lot more complexity, more buttons to click and things to do, was actually simpler than the WYSIWYG that it replaced for what they were trying to accomplish. Uh, this is exactly what we're trying to do with this whole two years of work, was make it so it was both easier for new people, like this pers French person, and more powerful for developers, which we just demonstrated. So again, thank you very much, Jane. One of the other parts of democratization was that it's regardless of device use. So these are our current stats that show desktop being a bit more than mobile, but mobile is growing faster than almost everything else out there, and it will be <laughs> where everything is in the future. So all everything that's in 5.0 and Gutenberg is completely responsive. As you can see, it works at every single side size on the web version of it. And we test on iPads and Android tablets and phones and everything. And we're also um, been investing into our mobile apps. This is a more invisible part of WordPress, but I think one of our most important long-term investments. In the past month, there have been over 1.3 million posts published through the mo mobile apps and 3.1 million photos and vid videos uploaded. I'm also very excited to announce that the mobile apps are going to be getting Gutenberg in February 2019. This is everything that you just saw with this. Well, some of what you just saw will be available on mobile apps. You'll be able to navigate and manipulate blocks in the native apps uh, just like you could on the web. This also means that just like Gutenberg is open source and has been adapted for other CMSs and other use cases already, there will be fully open source implementations of parsing and manipulating Gutenberg blocks available for iOS and Android with beautiful open source code and available to even be embedded in other apps, which I think is pretty darn cool. So to review, WordPress exists to increase access to publishing. We had a fundamental core problem that I hope I demonstrated to you that many parts of it that we might take for granted were too difficult to use. We started the Gutenberg project, and phase one, I think, makes a strong progress into addressing them. 
We've created this new fundamental building block, the blocks I just showed you, which are a mental model you can use right now for editing posts and pages. But really, across all, uh, we want to apply it across all of WordPress. And we're going to be bringing all this to devices of the future. So I think it's a good point to say thank you to phase one, and particularly highlight the work of Matthias, who couldn't be here, Yoan, and Tammy Lister. Tammy, are you here? Could you please stand up, since you are representing the entire team? Let's do a big round of applause. Whew. Congratulations. How does that feel to see all that stuff? I know. It's been a long road to here. I think 46, 47 major releases and iterations of Gutenberg in the wild. So what's coming next? All right, this is not a finish line. This is almost a starting line for the next generation of WordPress. So we've been talking a bit about phase two. And I'd like to re-explain some of the things that we have in mind for phase two, since we're going to start work on it tomorrow at Contributor Day. <laughs> so the next challenge of WordPress is now that we've made kind of the stuff inside the box easier, you still have these other things on your page. So if you were to look at an average website, this is your site. Phase one is all that stuff in that blue box there. It's inside the post content field, is one way to think about it. Phase two is the rest of it. I'm going to show you a scary part of WordPress you might not have looked at in a while. Remember this screen? <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> this is widgets.php, a little bit old school. This is what widgets plus Gutenberg could look like. The idea that you can bring every single block and actually manage your sidebar content areas with Gutenberg blocks. Anything you can put in your post and page, you can now put in sidebars. And because they're fully responsive, the interface adapts and the block should, should fully adapt. This is what that could look like in the customizer. You can have blocks and content. We've converted widgets and elements into blocks. We will convert widgets and elements into blocks. And this will now, we will eliminate one additional thing that people, when learning WordPress, have to figure it out. Because, you know, probably things we'll show next year is someone saying, well, we won't need to do it because it will be done by next year. But I imagine people are starting to get support requests that say, hey, why can't I put this widget into my post? And why can't I put these cool blocks in my post into my widget areas? The other nice thing about bringing along widgets is it brings along really the past decade of WordPress themes that all already support widget content areas. This is about to show you something else that you might not have seen in a while. Remember menus? This we're going to need a little bit of experimentation, but you could definitely imagine a way of editing menus inline or that we could create a different interface where there's sort of a restricted number of blocks that you could then arrange into a different menu. And perhaps even preview live on the front as you're doing so. Uh, basically, a simple way to imagine this, and actually one of the full projects that will be going for 5.1, is taking everything you can currently do in menus and putting that inside a block. So that what we call navigation menus today, by the way, we're also going to try to rename it, because menus is confusing for restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, how, wait, how many menus do I need? <laughs> Lunch, dinner, what else? Um, we're going to bring that all over. So. Phase one is done. We've got the fundamental building blocks for writing and editing. Phase two is thinking outside of post content. The focus of phase two is really about customization. We need to upgrade themes, widgets, and menus. And if you want to test this out before the new versions of WordPress come out, we're going to be re, uh, re-experimenting with all this in the Gutenberg plugin, just like we did during phase one. So if you have upgraded to 5.0 and Gutenberg was deactivated for you, consider reactivating that plugin, and you will get the latest and greatest of what's going to happen. We've talked about phase one and phase two about a year now. Um, I have publicly promised that I am going to reveal what I think phases three and phases four could be uh, right here in front of you all today. Any guesses, just out of curiosity? Well, what's that? Emoji? Wow, that's, that's all phases. <laughs> so we've been looking a lot, again, at, I think if you ever never know, if you ever never know where to go with software, it's always great to go back to users and listen to what they're doing, listen to what they're struggling with, and also to look in the ecosystem. What are people installing plugins for? What are they sort of working around? One of the areas that I think 
is really key for that and a place we can start to explore using the new fundamental building blocks of Gutenberg and the developmental framework that allows is collaboration, multi-user editing, and workflows. These are three areas right now. I'll be actually 100% honest. One of the reasons the copy and paste from Gutenberg, from Google Docs to Gutenberg is so good is that when I'm writing a post that I'm going to get reviewed and collaborate on with a bunch of people, Google Docs is better for that. But if we can integrate these workflows directly into WordPress, we can integrate with them then with user systems, we can integrate them with revisions, and we can allow them to be fully extensible in a way that a SaaS service like a Google Docs will never, ever be. So that's an idea for phase three, and you might notice that this is listed as 2020. I should also clarify that phases one, phase one and phases two, phases one and two, no, it makes more sense, are not done. Um, everyone is not leaving the editor and moving away from the things in, inside of post content. There's a lot more work to do there. And in fact, the next sort of minor update to WordPress uh, enhancement release will have lots of improvements in performance and everything. So we're going to keep working on the core Gutenberg. It just, we can now build some more things on top of it. Uh, there's already been some demos using things like WebRTC to allow real-time co-editing. You can do per-block locking for collaboration. It's some really exciting stuff that blocks allow you to do. The other exciting thing about this is as you are able to use blocks to lay out your entire website, bringing that workflow, approval, statuses, and revisions to the entirety of your site design is something that right now is really only available for folks using source control. Phase four gets a little murkier, but you might remember earlier I said that part of democratizing is doing things regardless of language. So one thing I think it's important for us to address in WordPress is an official way for multilingual sites. Uh, this is something that I get asked every single year whenever I do a work camp in Quebec or anything in Europe. <laughs> and I'm very excited that now we can say we have an idea for when and how and where we're going to do it. Core is now open. So we basically froze all new features coming into WordPress core to get all the focus and all the effort on Gutenberg. Now that it's open, um, I think there's a few different areas that we can sort of subdivide what I just described into you that can be projects with individual leaders and individual teams. Uh, these are a few of them. Don't worry about uh, writing all this down. It will be a post on the make slash core P2 any second now. <laughs> so, and that is where we'll be, be able to discuss it. The one thing I will highlight, though, um, is auto updates, optional auto updates for plugins, themes, and major versions of WordPress. I think we're ready for this now. We need a block directory uh, that sort of makes it easy to discover. And I would like to have actually inline installation and activation of blocks when you're inside of Gutenberg. And finally, we need to do a lot of triage and work. We have over 6,500 open issues in our core track right now. There have been some requests like uh, moving to a different bug tracker or things like that. Um, I would feel bad about doing that before we cleaned up some of our home first. So that is some of what's coming. Other things that we have in mind um, that maybe a few of you have asked about before, but um, who would like us to raise our minimum version of PHP? <laughs> Look on the make core P2 post. There's an amazing post from Gary now proposing that we move to PHP 5.6 in April 2019. And by this time next year, have PHP 7 be the minimum version for building things on top of WordPress. It's kind of funny. Things like 8,000 commits worth of work, and I got a little bit of applause, <laughs> changing a minimum version number. People go wild. <laughs> I would like to say thank you in a Marie Kondo way. Thank you for the service, version 4.9. It was, I thought it was our longest release of uh, WordPress ever, but actually it came in one day shy of uh, version 2.0 to 2.1, the cycle. There were over 173 million downloads of the 4.9 branch. And we got up to 68.4% 68 of all the word, known WordPresses in the world running the 4.9 branch. This is amazing, and I would like to thank 4.9. So please join me. <laughs> it, was a, it was a hearty release. We also slipped a lot in there. <laughs> so 
since we had this kind of longer period where we weren't shipping major versions, we actually put some really cool things like widget updates, enhancements to the code editor, everyone's favorite, the months of GDPR work, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, a very successful try Gutenberg callout, which was part of what led to Gutenberg being so widely adopted and tested prior to the release. It's actually the best tested code we've ever merged into WordPress. The other exciting thing, and I don't know if you noticed this, but release WordPress 5.0. <laughs> this was a release date that was discussed perhaps more than many others that have been in WordPress history. Uh, <laughs> it was a little bit controversial putting it out on the 6th. Uh, so we released it on December 6th, um, which was Thursday, a few days ago. Uh, the software is ready. We put it through the testings. We were a bit worried about doing it before WordCamp, so there was some very good discussion about should we do it after this event. Um, you know, but like I said, the vast majority of the WordPress world actually isn't here, and we uh, collectively, some of their needs outweigh the needs of us here in this room. But I was also kind of curious because we had a number of plugins that were sort of telling people to hold off on upgrading to WordPress 5.0 um, or to wait until January or until the point update. So we had a kind of nice A-B test in that um, version 4.7 of WordPress was actually released on an identical December 6th in 2016. And so looking uh, on the second day after the release, we had about 2.2 million installs of WordPress 4.7. Uh, for WordPress 5.0, we already have 2.3 million installs. This is as of day two. This is continuing to grow. So I think there are rightly some people who want to wait for a future version of, of Gutenberg or want to uh, for the holiday season, which is totally fine. They can delay their release. But we're seeing that the kind of early adoption numbers are very similar. It's also worth noting that because it came out on a Thursday, many of the hosts have not started their auto updates because uh, many managed WordPress hosts will actually update your WordPress for you. You don't have to click a button or do anything. Uh, so this is, to my knowledge, for all the major WordPress hosts, just people clicking the button within a WordPress dashboard. So actually pretty cool. And the support loads, and the feedbacks and the support forms and everything have been pretty smooth. Uh, I was even very excited that uh, you shared in the core editor channel the other day that the support loads they see for people upgrading to 5.0 are about the same as what they've seen before. 5.0 also has an interesting effect on the Gutenberg plugin. Because 5.0 deactivates uh, Gutenberg and you can choose to reactivate it, we've had about 162,000 of the testers of the Gutenberg plugin deactivate it. Of course, part of the making this big a change and part of what we started promoting over the summer in addition to Gutenberg was a classic editor plugin because we want people to be able to install something, a plugin we created actually called the classic editor, and we've committed to supporting to the end of 2021, so a few years. Um, they could install that and then whenever they auto-updated or clicked the button to update to 5.0, they would keep the old editor and nothing would change for them uh, besides the version number, perhaps some other ancillary benefits that have gone into WordPress 5.0. So we were hoping to remove the fear that people had. Uh, it's also probably a good way to track people opting out. We promote the classic editor in the upgrade, post-upgrade screen for WordPress 5.0, so pretty prominently for anyone who prefers the old editor or uses integration or a plugin or assistive technology or anything that might work better with the old editor, they can uh, see it. And actually, since 5.0, we've seen the classic editor go up by 124,000 installs. So. That was 2018, and yeah, all that happens. <laughs> Thank you. I would drop the mic, but it's not a thing. There's a, a saying I love, like, either you win or you learn. We also learned a lot in 2018 and since the last day of the word. I want to highlight a few lessons that I'm personally taking away from this entire cycle. First is that we need the various teams across WordPress working together better. Um, I don't think it makes sense to have uh, entirely separate meetings and everything for PHP and accessibility and privacy and all these different things. Uh, this should be the part of every single feature and everything that we develop from the very beginning. So whatever core is, those elements should be uh, integrated from, the, from day one. We still need to keep learning JavaScript even more deeply. Uh, as was perhaps demonstrated by the show of hands a little bit earlier, um, people's ability to participate in this new generation of WordPress is limited 
uh, by JavaScript knowledge. I feel that is one of our biggest gating factors. I think that we need to continue to do every single, probably even move to where we have more JavaScript talks at WordCamps than PHP talks, where we're doing more tutorials, more workshops, getting more of the new generation of WordPress books that are written about WordPress 5.0 and above. I think should teach people the basics of JavaScript so they can learn the syntax and learn that it's not that scary. And start to promote more tools, amazing tools like Ahmed's that actually show how easy it is to create blocks. <sighs> we learned the tough way the importance of triage and code freezes. As you might have noticed, uh, we missed the date, originally scheduled date for WordPress 5.0. And uh, that was due to the best of intentions. We brought in, we merged some code that was trying to fix an edge case, a small bug, and that merged and caused a regression. There were some people updated to one of the betas that actually got a white screen on the editor from a JavaScript error. Really bad experience. Um, we fixed it within hours, but it really shook people's trust in the 5.0 release process, and that's why we had to delay it for a few weeks. Uh, we did not rush it, though. The, as I pointed out on one of the threads, actually our distance from 5.0 release candidate to 5.0 release was exactly two weeks, which is exactly the average of the previous few releases distance from release candidate uh, to release date. Uh, but another mistake that I'll take extra personal responsibility for was we were scared to announce a new release date after we missed our previous one. And that created a lot of sort of fear and uncertainty where I was trying to give like symbol or uh, symbols, signs, that you know we did this release candidate, that means WordPress is coming out really, really soon. Um, but we never talked about the average date between uh, release candidate and a normal release until we announced our new date, which was a few days before uh, the 6th. So I completely understand where the date seemed to come out of the blue and it was very stressful for people. Some of the more positive things we learned were that the betas were more tested than any other releases. We've talked about feature plugins and things like that before. Uh, not many people know this, but for betas and release candidates of core WordPress versions, we usually have under 10,000 and usually under 5,000 active sites using them. So having six, 700,000 sites running uh, the Gutenberg plugin was over 100 times improvement in the number of testers that were happening before release. It's part of the reason Gutenberg was able to become so much more robust prior to it going out in 5.0. And finally, open source is amazing, and open source is difficult to develop in public. We had a lot of struggles here. Gutenberg happened entirely in the public eye. Uh, you can go back all the way to the beginning. You can see the change sets. You can see the arguments. You can, see, you can also see the people reviewing versions from a year ago and giving it one stars, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, you can see people essentially using our review system on the plugin directory to vote against Gutenberg coming into core, which is fine. But it's not necessarily reviewing the plugin. Uh, it's more sort of expressing what they thought the future of WordPress should be, that perhaps we need a different medium or way for people to uh, go to. So uh, that is, I think, just something we have to keep in mind as we move forward. A lot of people who've come up to me so far at this WordCamp have said, you know, 5.0 seemed like it was going to be terrible. And post the release, it's been pretty quiet. Or they seem to be like, this was one of the most controversial or most acrimonious release processes that we've had in a long time, maybe ever, if you were new to WordPress. Some of the old ones were pretty bad. But um, I blame Twitter, partially. <laughs> you can blame almost everything on Twitter. Between Twitter and Facebook, we have all the world's problems. Um, but I also think that it was part of the, the result of some of this development and some of the warts and some of the debates and some of the sort of open source product for a normal company, all this would happen behind the scenes or not at all. For us, we have all of this happening um, in public, and it's all archived and linkable and version controlled and everything. So we just have to keep in mind that, uh, well, in addition to trying to treat each other well and have good etiquette and really converse in a productive way for whatever we're doing, uh, keep in mind that things might appear worse than they actually are. Because the conversations and the things happening on Twitter or in the blog post or whatever else might not actually be representative of the basics or fundamentals or first principles of the software. Finally, one exciting thing that didn't really fit, but I just wanted to show you all because I think it's pretty cool, is this year uh, sites using SSL, WordPress sites using SSL, actually crossed over the non-SSL sites. I'm very proud that we were one of the earliest supporters and adopters of the Let's Encrypt. 
I'm proud of all the hosts that support WordPress. I have adopted low cost or free SSL certificates and we move people onto them. We've had, I mean, the 20% increase, that's an absolute increase. So that's going from around like a 37% to a 57% in one year. And it looks like it's continuing. So we're approaching, we are seeing the possibility that when you get the right technology in the hands of people for a low cost, it can actually really change something fundamental about the web, which I find kind of beautiful. So that is kind of the WordPress updates for a little while. Now, I'm going to briefly go through some of the community stuff, because the community is, of course, part of what makes WordPress so exciting. Um, at different WordCamps, we've been growing every year. We've had about 145 WordCamps in 48 countries this year, which is wild. 45,000 tickets sold. And one of the things that I think is most exciting is the organizers. Thir over 1,300 organizers organized those 145 camps, and that is up 33% year over year. 2,600 speakers, and also an exciting 1,100 sponsors. WordCamps are cool, but of course we know meetups are bigger. These are typically the monthly get-togethers that WordPress uh, folks will organize, and sometimes there's even a few in a given town. Uh, we're now up to over 350,000 members of the meetup group, which is a 50% year-over-year growth. That is wild. These are a lot more people going to the 687 meetup groups all around the world. 687, that's a lot of different cities. That's a lot of different neighborhoods of cities. On the foundation side, we were able to do 12 events, which is tripling the amount that we did last year of the do action. So these are where WordPress and other folks get together to support charitable organizations by creating them an amazing WordPress website that is totally free. And as we talked about earlier, it's something that can grow with them and doesn't lock them into anything. They were as far ranged from McAllen, Texas, which notice doesn't really have like a, a airport code or anything, uh, to Bristol, Stuttgart, Germany, Beirut, Montreal, Port Harcourt. Where is NGA? Nigeria? Oh, wow. That's really cool. We had a number of open source workshops. So these are bringing folks into learning how to contribute to open source, uh, often starting from a uh, more basic technical level. We had these in Ghana, India, St. Lucia, and Colombia. And this year, we're proud to announce that the WordPress Foundation is able to donate and support with grants to Internet Archive, Girl Development, and Black Girls Code. <laughs> uh, we were very excited to be able to do 30,000 of grants this year. It, our ability to continue to do so might be hindered in the future. Um, so as I talked about last year, you can donate to the WordPress Foundation, and there's a little stripe button and everything for it. Since last year, $3,445 have been donated. That is total for the year. It's not per month, not per day. So let's give a round of applause to the 85 donors. <laughs> Thank you. We are working on updates that will actually highlight the donors on the website. And if you have in some way benefited from WordPress and would like to support organizations and events like we just spoke about, uh, please consider going and uh, perhaps becoming an annual recurring donor on WordPressFoundation.org. WordPress.org, by the way, different website, um, we finally kind of loosened and were able to ship a number of really great improvements, including a completely new About page, a completely new download page, completely new profiles, a support page, and then, of course, this beautiful slash Gutenberg, which actually allows you to live use the Gutenberg interface right on the landing page. Uh, I am very, very uh, proud of all the teams that worked on this. I think, do we actually mention support? Did I go through that? Yeah, we've got the Help Help launch on support. That's a project three years in the making. There's been a lot of work that's gone into making this happen. As we improve, WordPress.org is kind of like our, our home, our building. It's where we make the things that we make. And uh, so any improvements we go there, I think, have uh, great effects down the road of both making our work better, but also making it easier for new folks to get involved. Because remember, the vast majority will not come to WordCamps or even ever see this. Uh, we haven't done this before, but I'd like to pick a theme song for 2019, <laughs> a theme that goes through everything. Uh, we are going to play it, but we weren't sure about the copyright. <laughs> so I encourage you all to check out Tighten Up by Archie Bell and the Drells. 
amazing song, a lot of fun. Uh, it's actually, in the intro, they talk about how it's a, a little band from Houston, Texas. I'm from Houston, Texas, so I was very happy about that. <laughs> Thank you, Texas. Uh, a lot of what we want and need to do in 2019 is tighten up. We've built this new foundation. We now have what we can, the foundation that we can build the next 15 years of WordPress on. We've got the JavaScript, we've got the APIs, we've got the development frameworks, we have the user interface frameworks that can be, it can scale from the simple to the complex. We've got the themes, we've got the plugins. You notice on the plugins page now, we've actually put Gutenberg ready plugins above the featured plugins. So we're really going all in on getting everything Gutenberg enabled, capitalizing on the work thus far, and starting with all haste and urgency to get to the point where you can really control your entire website uh, with Gutenberg. Um, but we need to also tighten up everything we do. We need better engineering management processes. Uh, I talked already about like release management. We need to start to really whittle down those 6,500 issues. I do understand that open issues are not a reflection of um, project health, but I don't think it would be bad if we really went through and were able to triage them all, and at least know that each one had been touched, and we know like whether it's a real thing, what the priority is, even if it means maybe saying some of these things we'll never do. I'd rather that be explicit than something that just kind of inferred by the abandonment or no responses on the ticket. Uh, so when you get home, or if you're listening to this online or whatever, uh, play this song. It's pretty catchy. It makes you wiggle and dance a little bit. And, uh, and as you go to contribute, and as we build what is coming next, the next 15 years of WordPress, um, maybe try to bring that attitude and, uh, and jiggle and wiggle to WordPress. And that is what we got. I would like to thank some sponsors. We got key sponsors, Bluehost, Google, WooCommerce, and Jetpack were the top sponsors for this WordCamp. I want to thank the organizers. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> I don't know about y'all, this was the smoothest uh, WordCamp US I've ever been to. Like, it, great. Music, food, everything. And that's partly put together by over 200 volunteers. And thus concludes the state of the word. So thank you very much. <laughs>